because the tool that I normally have you download and use is not available, I'm creating a quick screencast so that you can experience a different tool. So what you see on the right hand side of my screen are the directions for the Word tutorial. You'll see that Technique 6 has to do with using a tool called Pro Writing Aid. So the first thing we're going to do is open that. It will open in your browser. We're going to choose to upload a document. While you can use Pro Writing Aid as a plugin in Word, we're going to skip that for now and simply upload a document. So wherever it is that you have saved the material for the tutorial, you're going to upload and you'll see that it starts to show up in the window here. It's creating reports as we speak. We want to make sure the settings are correct. So make sure you have US English. There are varieties of English available and make sure that the document type you've created is or that you're uh, having pro writing aid use as a standard is general technical. All right, you'll see if we click on this, the ribbon comes down and shows us all the reports that will be available. When the real time icon shows 285, that will be when it's finished processing. Because we're using the free version of Pro Writing Aid, it only analyzes the first few hundred words of a document. You have to use the paid version in order to upload more material. So we're just going to use this as a way to see what's possible. All right, the first thing we're going to do is click on the summary report. All right, it takes a little bit for that to calculate. You'll see that the key scores up above, grammar score, it wants us to increase. The spelling score is pretty good, but it wants us to, in, excuse me, increase. The style score as well, it wants us to increase. If you look over here at the left, you'll see that there are several areas that you can um, look at within the summary report. There's a grammar area, writing style, sentence length, readability, something they call sticky sentences, sentence structure, consistency, and repeats. What we're going to do is we're just going to scroll down and take a look at where our document may need work. So uh, we already said the grammar score, spelling, sentence length, style, readability, long repeated phrases. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to, we're going to close this, we're going to go up to reports, and for some reason it's recalculating. I don't know why. We're going to use the grammar report first. So let's click on the grammar report. That's where we find spelling issues. So the first thing we're going to do is see what kind of spelling issues Pro Writing Aid has found in our material. So you can go to the, the place in the text where this word appears by clicking this arrow and it shows it to us. It says an unknown word, DSN. Does it need correction? That would be a no. So it turns out that DSN is a very common term in the military. Uh, Defense something network. I've forgotten what it stands for, but it is a secured line as opposed to the TEL, which means the telephone, right? So there's no reason to change that one. Let's look at the second term. Blast X, where is it? Oh, right here right here. Last X. So it turns out we don't want to change this one either 
because this is a specialized material that's used. So it doesn't appear in Pro Writing Aid's dictionary. Um, if we wanted to, and we were going to do more work on this particular material, we could add it to the dictionary. Or we could just decide, you know what, as you can in uh, Word, you can ignore, right? You can use a thesaurus to try and identify other words that might work, but in this case, obviously, that's not going to work. So one of the one of the effective things about Pro Writing Aid is that we can add terms to our dictionary to make sure that BlastX is always uh, spelled correctly and it won't be identified as a spelling error anymore. All right, now let's look at the we'll close this up. We'll look at the six grammar issues found. We'll go back to the beginning of the document. All right, this one, what is that telling us? Let's see if I can get us to go to that. All right, it's down here. And it says, it's right here, yes. Okay, make sure that all of the quotations and brackets in this paragraph are closed. So let's see, is it closed? These procedures are intended to ensure no disturbance or destruction of resources. I think that what we would want to do is close it here, right? Okay, so it found one grammar or punctuation mechanical error. It's called grammar here. Uh, let's look at this one. All right, it's up here at the top. Possible confused word. Let's see what that says here. SOP outlines the steps to be taken regarding maintenance, repair, and rehabilitation of historic buildings and structures. It's intended for all personnel other Ah, uh, yes, it should be than, right? And so we can just change it by clicking. All right, looks like that took care of that. What about facilities? Possible missing comma. All right, let's get this up here where we can see it better. Facilities. Affected facilities for a complete listing of applicable TXMF facilities. See the integrated. Yes, correct. It should have a comma there. So let's click it and it adds it. All right. What about repair? It says again, missing comma. All right. We'll get this up here so you can see it. Missing comma before the coordinating conjunction. All right, building maintenance, repair, or rehabilitation. So this is, um, you can't tell from looking at it here, but this would have been a, a bullet, I believe. So one of the things Pro Writing Aid does when you use it through your browser is it removes most of the formatting. All right, so do we need a comma after repair? Well, honestly, we need to know what style guide says. If you know the AP style, then you would not use one here. If you're using Chicago style, you would. So I didn't give you a style guide to use with this material. And so you don't know which to do. All right. So that's some of the things you can do with the grammar report. Let's go back up here to reports. And look at the ECHOES report. Tells us we have 40 close repeats. So let's see where those are. So it's telling us uh, one of those is the appearance of F. Do you know why F appears in Appendix F? Because every heading begins with F, right? F1, and down below there'd be an F2, F3, could be a F3A, right? Because that's the way the standards are listed and numbered. So what we want to do here is we can choose to hide F. And now 
that doesn't appear here as an issue with a close repeat. What about SOP? This is also repeated many times. Okay, so in this paragraph right here, Texas Military for Forces, boy, this is full of acronyms, which would be true of most military government writing and oftentimes in big corporations, period. All right, the terms of the PA supersede this SOP, right? So we got, it doesn't say SOP here, but SOP is the standard operating procedure one. This SOP uh, of this SOP. So we could decide that we could rewrite this in order to um, reduce the number of repetitions. We want to be careful that we don't remove repeated, with, that we don't create misunderstanding by removing them. Let's look at, let's look at a specific one. Let's look at personnel. That's this paragraph here. This SOP outlines the steps to be taken regarding the maintenance, repair, and rehabilitation of historic buildings and structures. It's intended for all personnel other than the CRM. Examples of applicable, applicable personnel include the following. All right, so these two terms appear pretty close to each other. And the idea is that you could change it in a variety of ways. So let's say you could change it by chain, changing group, changing personnel to group or to people or to organization or staff. What's wrong with that? In our style course, I teach people to beware of elegant variation. And I would call this an example of elegant variation. It's more elegant not to repeat. On the other hand, it's also more clear to repeat. Plain language tells us that repetition is a better thing. So one of the things that you could do here is revise this whole two sentences in order to combine them into one. And in fact, there's several things that you could do here, but we'll just talk about the one that has to do with repetition. It's intended for all personnel other than the CRM. Why can't we just have including it is intended for all personnel other than the CRM. How about that? That way we've gotten rid of our repetition and we've also made it more concise. We can make it even more concise by getting rid of it is, but you get the idea. All right, now I want you to go up and look at one more report. This time, let's look at readability. I don't know if you've ever studied anything about readability. It identifies several very difficult paragraphs. So it is telling us that this paragraph is hard to read. This one is very hard to read. This one is very hard to read and it's giving us scores. So those scores probably don't mean anything to you. So one of the things I want to ask you to do is to click on more about this report. Have a view, um, skim through some of the material here about why real readability, why some people say readability matters, what the scores mean, we're not going to go into detail about this. You'll learn more about it in a couple of other courses. You can learn about it in the style course in our program or in the content analysis course. Let's try the paragraph compliance with. See what happens here. All right, let's read through this. Compliance with the revised DOD anti-terrorism. That's the little header. 
As with new construction, rehabilitation of existing buildings at Texas installations requires compliance with various standards, which may trigger cultural resources compliance issues. Well, that's what the whole thing is about, right? The whole document. Project managers are encouraged to work with their CRMs to develop creative and cost-effective solutions, and then they give some examples, to retrofit historic buildings and structures to comply with anti-terrorism standards. Then the next sentence, the decision to demolish a historic building rather than attempting to retrofit must be justified with a cost analysis. So one of the things that I want to ask you to recognize here is that we have two passive sentences. Project managers are encouraged, right? That's a form of B followed by a past participle. That means a verb with an ED or an EN on the end, right? And we also have one here. The decision must be justified. So who would be doing the justification? Who's doing the encouragement? Avoiding the passive would mean that you want to emphasize who is doing the encouraging and who is doing the justification, right? If you want to do that, then making these sentences active voice is a good idea. If you don't, then you really should just be thinking about cohesion, probably. All right. Feel free to spend time looking at the other reports. You'll see there are a lot of different ones here. Some of them might not be as interesting as they would be if you had the entire an entire document. As I said at the beginning, the fact that we're using the free version of Pro Writing Aid means that you can only look at the first few hundred words of a document. All right, play around, learn what you can about tools for identifying things that should be copy edited.